Precise aim activated. We destroyed an enemy ship. No problem. Precise aim activated. Torpedo spotted. Welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. I put a poll out on YouTube, I think last night, yesterday at some time, to see which ship you people are most excited about to hear a review of on Monday. And uh, YouTube, being YouTube, uh, seems to have broken it. So <laughs> when I checked this morning, uh, everything was at zero. There were no votes in it. Now I do remember looking at it yesterday after I have uh, actually launched it. And um, the Thunderer the new tier 10 premium British battleship cruiser thing has been in the lead by quite a significant margin so that's what we're just going to be rolling with which means you're going to get the Thunderer today. So according to the details here this was a ship that uh, was designed as a battleship but the designers drew from the construction experience gained by the British during World War II which is interesting because there weren't that many battleships that were actually built by the British during the Second World War. But um, uh, this, what this is supposed to be, and according to the wiki in uh, the, the official Wargaming wiki, this is supposed to be a reimagined L2 design. Now, there, I haven't been able to get my hands on some actual blueprints or like, images of blueprints of these ships, but... In the interwar period, towards the end of the First World War, the Americans were starting to build a lot of battleships. And uh, being the ungrateful colonies that they were, they decided that they were going to have the biggest uh, fleet of ships in the world. And the British didn't quite like that idea, because also the Japanese were starting to build stuff. And the British really couldn't be having with that being behind. They had to have the biggest fleet of ships, that is. So uh, they came up with a bunch of sketches for an, a, for a new program of production of battleships and battle cruisers. So this culminated in the N3 design of battleships and the G3 design of battle cruisers, where the battle cruisers were actually larger than the battleships and um, very similar in, armor, in armament, but slightly uh, hampered in terms of armor, as, is, as was traditional around the time. None of this really happened because uh, A, they couldn't have even built any of these things, and B, 
uh, because of the uh, in, in the car in the dockyards they had at the time, and B the Washington Naval Treaty kicked in in the early 1920s, and that put a very very quick stop to this because these were all around 50,000 ton designs. So these things were massive. Now. Uh, once again, the wiki claims that this was an L3 design, so this would be the battleship design. Now, there were designs of both of them with a, with a 457 millimeter guns. So that was actually a thing. So if you see the, the, the number after the, the letter designates the guns per turret. So the L2 design, for example, would have been the twin turret design with uh, eight guns and the three designs would have been triple turret designs with nine guns so two forward one aft now the battleship design uh, didn't quite look like this well to be fair neither did the battle cruiser design but at least the battle cruiser design the k2 design one of the early sketches that led to the g3 design uh, actually had twin funnels like this thing here not not quite in the same position and it certainly didn't have the, the much more modern looking superstructure here but uh, the uh, the L2 design only had a single funnel. So unless, uh, you know, this were just inspirations, um, I'm kind of tempted to call this more of a battle cruiser just because of uh, of the ship's stats. One thing that really strikes me as, as hilarious, by the way, is that set of anti-aircraft guns here at the rear, plus that curiously raised little podium there. Um, can can you imagine what happens to these things if anybody fires the guns <laughs> over the stern of the ship? <laughs> I, I would say they'd be they'd be blasted clean into the sea actually <laughs> if anybody tried that. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what that's all about. But generally, you see the uh, anti-aircraft guns uh, centered around the superstructure between the guns for a very good reason because these things have a massive blast radius. These are 457 millimeter or 18 inch guns. Um, yeah, I don't think that would be great, but uh, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what came of this. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's have a quick look at um, at some comparisons. So first of all, one thing that I would like to point out just for the hilarity of it, if we read the description of the Conqueror, it says uh, the project was notable for the 419 millimeter main guns, which were developed in the early 1920s and were the most powerful British naval artillery systems. And then we're reading the Thunderer, which reads, uh, the project was notable for having 457 millimeter main guns that have been developed in the early 1920s and were the most powerful British naval artillery system. <laughs> if that isn't the, if that isn't the absolute pinnacle of description for power creep, then I don't know what is. <laughs> anyway. Um, Let's let's start let's start doing some comparisons here. Uh, the first and obvious one is between the Thunderer and the Conqueror. The Conqueror being the Tech Tree Tier Ten British battleship, which I haven't played. Uh, but uh, let's look at the numbers and see how these two compare. First thing that stands out is that unlike the Tech Tree line, the Thunderer doesn't get a rapid reload. It actually gets a precise aim. It also does get a defensive AA and a Hydro whereas the Conqueror gets the Rapid Reload consumable. Uh, the Conqueror has more health than and better torpedo defenses than the Thunderer, not by a large margin. But uh, what these two have in common is that the armor is, well, in, in, in simple terms, dreadful. This is, these, are, these are really, really more battle cruisers uh, than battleships in that their armor is, is paper thin. The Thundra is a little bit faster when the Conqueror gets to get a tiny margin on the time to speed. They do have the same traverse speed, so the rate at which the ship is actually turning, but the Thundra has a very, very suspiciously quick turn time. So a 10.8 base second turn time on the rudder, if you're not aware, this is the time, I've done a video about it in the past, but this is the time it takes from having the rudder all the way on one side uh, shifting it over all the way to the other side. It's not the rate in which the ship turns. It's the the rate in which the, the the time it takes for the rudder to go from one extreme to the other. But it is an indication as to how fast you can get the ship to change direction, not how tiny its turn cycle is. That would be the traverse speed. So uh, that's cruiser level. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything out in tier 10 battleship land that can beat that. Uh, so that is a very, very significant difference here. Now, the guns, obviously being of a larger caliber, reload faster because reasons. 
But we only get eight of them versus the 12 on the Conqueror. The range is a bit shorter and the HE damage is significant, as, as one would expect, with 1670 and a 22% fire chance per, hit per shell. Now you do have to, to, uh, to keep in mind that you only get eight shells instead of 12. So the Alpha Strike, the HE Alpha Strike on the Conqueror is actually higher. Uh, it's just that you have a longer reload which is kind of where this where this somewhat compensates. Now, this is this is significant if you're dealing with things like destroyers. If you're used to one-shotting destroyers in British battleships, you can't quite do that with a Thunderer. You do have to be a little bit more careful with uh, getting in engagements. You can't expect to just blap them out of the water. Uh, you can still do an absolutely significant amount of damage to them, obviously, if you can actually hit everything on target. But, um, yeah, so these, uh, the, the armor-piercing, on the other hand, is looks okay on, on paper. But it's it's all coming down to the penetration, and we'll talk about that in a second. Obviously, the 300% Citadel damage rate, don't let that fool you. You're not going to be scoring a lot of Citadels for these things. And the absolutely dreadful 4.5 degrees per second turret traverse. The secondaries are completely identical. You get eight, set, eight sets of twins, and um, they are reasonably short range with just under six kilometers. The Thunderer does get slightly better AA. That's probably the... I don't know if that's the funky bits that are sitting on the stern there, <laughs> ready to be blown off by the main guns. But um, on the small caliber AA, she does get um, a slight improvement. But the big difference here, obviously, is that she gets the defensive AA. So even if it's just an air defense alert one, it still gives you 25, uh, 27, uh, blah, 75% difference. Um, and the concealment on the Thunderer is pretty, pretty good as well. Which is funny, because if, once again, if you actually compare the two ships visually, they look completely identical. <laughs> so, reasons. Um, the other thing that I would like to just take a very quick look at is uh, to compare it to the Ohio, because the Ohio as well is an 8-gun, 457mm, uh, 18-inch ship. Now, this is these are American guns, so they're not going to get the same amount of AG damage. They're not going to get the same fire chance. Uh, they do get a, a better armor-piercing damage. But um, it's all also down to the penetration. So with the, uh, with the Thunderous guns, you're not going to be uh, citadeling battleships. Just let me put it that way. You, you, you just won't. Very, very, very rarely. I, I, don't think I've, I, think, I don't think I've seen any citadels outside um, playing, playing test battles against bots with this thing and uh, firing at Izumos at point-blank range or something like that. Uh, it's all about the HE. The HE has very good uh, penetration, but it's not good enough to Citadel battleships. Hell, it's probably not even good enough to Citadel cruisers. I have yet to see an HE Citadel after, I think I've played about 15 games in this thing or so. So, um, how do we set this up then? What do we have? We have a, we have a ship that has dreadful turret traverse, uh, has very, very good rudder shift, uh, has terrible armor, and that doesn't just go for the main belt or, or deck armor. It also goes for the turret armor. These turrets get shot off like no one's business. Um, it's, it's reasonably quick and it's very maneuverable. Uh, and it's got big guns. But it's really more about an HE spammer. So the first slot I have put is the main battery mod 1. Now, you could be tempted to use the main battery mod 2. I would not recommend it. Because, once again, the, the turret armor is absolutely abysmal. And the, uh, you can get these turrets disabled by 150 millimeter armor piercing. I've had Neptunes shoot my turrets off. <laughs> the uh, main battery mod 3 would be a good choice as well, because the dispersion isn't great, but you do have the precise aiming skill, and with that active, you actually get a good dispersion, which means we can and probably should put this into main battery mod 1, because this is not a stationary long-range sniper ship. First of all, it doesn't have the range for it, and second of all, it doesn't have the armor for it. So unless you're making extremely good use of islands, uh, you're going to need to be, on occasion, a little bit more mobile and moving around. And then having turret traverse is a good thing. Also, because if you take a look at the guns, uh, they are a balanced layout. So you have uh, you have a German battleship layout, pretty much. You've got two guns forward, and uh, two turrets forward, and two turrets aft. So you do need to swing them around on occasion when you're, when you're changing directions, as much as you try to avoid that. Uh, I have put the propulsion mod in slot 2. Now, I have played with the deck protection mod because she does get set on fire very, very easily. But um, 
in the end, the you need all the help you can get to compensate for the poor armor protection that you have on the ship. And that's where the propulsion mod comes in for me. In the third slot sits the steering gear. And that brings us down to a whopping 9.39 seconds turn time on the rudder. See, it's pretty maneuverable for a battle cruiser. And she has to be, <laughs> because being shot at in this thing is not fun. Uh, the guns with the elite bonus, which you can choose between torpedo damage reduction, because, I mean, honestly, why would you want it? It's not great to begin with, and it's not going to give you very much. Uh, get the main battery reload and the traverse. And with that, we're getting up to a 19.4 second base reload and a five point, uh, almost 5.8 uh, degrees per second turret traverse speed. This is, in effect, a tier 10 Vanguard, if you want, or or a hood. Uh, it's, it's a similar, although the... Um, I would not be firing HE with a hood, though. But uh, yeah, a tier 10 Vanguard is probably a pretty good way of, of seeing this ship. How have I set up the commander? Um, you do want underwater protection, obviously. You can choose between torpedo alert or getting battle field support, given that she is equipped with both sonar and defensive AA. Uh, this is my choice here. Um, you do want the artillery maintenance, obviously and the air defense expert. I have put fire supremacy because she only gets two precise aim and the dispersion without the precise aim on is, it's not quite American levels of terrible, but um, she doesn't have the rate of fire necessarily because she doesn't get the rapid reload. So uh, I really wanted to have a third one on those. Uh, I have the exploit weakness because you are constantly trying to set, on fire, set things on fire and you actually do have the high alpha strike to um, you know, make, make use of that. The marksman skill, obviously, the extinguisher is a no-brainer as well. You could take close quarters, but um, honestly, uh, I, th I think demolition expert is the better choice here because you are trying to bait, uh, to, trying to bait damage cons, and uh, shooting somebody's guns off is a good way to get that happening. <laughs> so uh, you can you you can use the compartment maintenance. Um, I've personally gone with a slightly more aggressive, maybe honor seeker here. It's really not a big difference. Uh, if the carrier wants you dead, you're dead. Uh, the defensive AA is not sufficient to deter a carrier that is determined, unless you are in good company of uh, anything that flies the American flag. Bloody colonists again. Um, down the road, you want the IFHE, I would say. Because most of the time, if you are firing at battleships, you're going to be firing HE. If you're going to be firing at destroyers, it doesn't matter. If you're going to be firing at cruisers at any at long range, you're going to miss. If you're going to fire at cruisers at close range or mid range, you're going to be using the armor piercing. So, um, IFHE is a good choice, I, I think here, uh, just to get you more full pens on uh, against battleship deck armor on the on the high explosive shells. What else can we look at? Uh, the camouflage. You can get the historical camouflage, which looks um, suspiciously black. So I'm not going to. Sh I'm not going to show if going to be sure if we ever get a black conqueror. I don't think so because I don't think we get black version of premium ships. But um, oh no, we do, do we? Texas, right? Black Texas is a thing. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a very black camo, <laughs> and it gives us um, hit points, main battery range, large caliber AA range, which is curious, and torpedo damage reduction, which is uh, again not not really a massively useful thing. So uh, if it had if it had been a more standard battleship. Uh, Battleship camo in terms of um, uh, main battery range plus main battery dispersion. I think that I would have personally preferred that. Uh, but uh, and then maybe trade out the torpedo damage reduction and uh, use the large caliber AA range there. Uh, that might be nice, even though the large caliber AA isn't going to do a huge amount of deal uh, of damage anyway. But it's it's still good to have. All right then. Um, the, elite, uh, the, the battle honors we don't even need to look at. It's you know, set 55. To, it's free resources. Forget about it. So um, let's, let's get into some battles, finally, after a lot of rumbling. Let's uh, start out with a scenario that you'll be finding often, at least on the Asian server, in Tier 10. We are on Hourglass in base capture, and we're up against uh, Yamato, Double Vermont, another Yamato, Alsace, Rune, and Somers. So it's big caliber, long, extreme range, snipey land. Um, what do you do in these sort of situations? You don't have the, you don't have quite the range as your teammates do. You don't quite have the armor as your teammates do. In fact, your armor is absolutely dreadful. 
So uh, you, what you're playing in this in this sort of scenario is uh, pre pretend you're an American heavy cruiser. <laughs> Make make the island your waifu. That is the uh, th that is the thing that you need. Hug it as close as you can, and use the island as as a way to deflect enemy fire. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be sitting next to that island, and uh, we're going to get into a long range gun duel with enemy ships. Now, obviously, given that our armor piercing doesn't quite have the power to re do really nasty things to stuff like Vermonts and Yamatos, which are reasonably heavily armored. Uh, we're going to be rely relying on the HE in this. And we're just going to park the thing right next to this... Um, you, you see this little ledge here, right where I'm pointing at. Okay, there's the first Yamato. So, uh, let's begin, shall we? <laughs> Precise aim up, shells out. Uh, we're just going to get the front turrets out. Now, it'd be nice to get the rear turrets around, but that means I'll be exposing an awful lot. So there's our first fire. You see Damaconing it. Uh, we'll see about it. I can't get the rear turrets around, but... Um, I am sneaking behind the island here just to, because I am immediately getting shot at by two Yamatos. So he's not damage conning that fire, which means we're going to shoot at the other Yamato. Because if we give him a double or triple fire, he's going to damage con that, and we don't want that. So let's get some shots out on that thing. That's a fire on the second Yamato. Now he damage cons. So now it's a matter of seeing if we can get some perma fire set without getting ourselves killed in the process. There are some torpedoes around, which is quite early for that. But um, we're, we're stuck here reasonably safely. So once again, we only get the forward turrets out, and this is really why you need the uh, why you need the um, propulsion. You see, the HE doesn't do only does semi pens on things, and immediately we're getting shot at by the other Yamato, which immediately takes out one of our turrets, which is not something I can be having with because I need those. So um, back off again because there is Vermont, and Vermont has a lot of big guns as well. So back behind the island. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the dispersion is... And there comes the Vermont shots. Yep, <laughs> that would have hurt. <laughs> That's why I'm using this ledge here. Um, if you've ever played World of Tanks or watched World of Tanks, I think this is what they call side scraping. No, it's not quite the same mechanic because we don't actually have armor angling, but um, effectively I'm baiting the Vermont at shooting at the island and wasting his, his salvos, which he doesn't have a, an awful lot of. So... Uh, once again, there is one Yamato which knows not to Damacon single fires, and there's the other one who does do that, so we're going to try and set that guy on fire. Uh, pick your targets. There come some Vermont shots. I'm actually, I was actually unspotted there for a second. The very good concealment else, uh, also actually helps, but yeah, once, once they see me, first of all, I am the ship that is most exposed here. And there's some crossfire shots from the other Vermonts coming in. Everyone's shooting at me. Okay, that was the guy who doesn't know that you shouldn't damage con single fire, so let's see if we can get a perma fire going. Uh, that... Nope, still no luck. And uh, we're going to be backing off again, because I'm pretty sure the Vermont should be about relo reloaded about now. Uh, there comes some more Yama shots going into the island, and there comes the Vermont salvo. <laughs> this guy must be so frustrated right now. Um, and we're undetected, because A, we're behind the island, and B, our um, our concealment has gone, uh, our bloom has gone down from, from firing the guns. So we're going forward again. Rinse and repeat. Now, you do have to be a little bit more forward than your friends, because... Um, the guns don't quite have the range otherwise. And uh, I am trying to get my uh, my rear turrets around that ledge sufficiently while I'm not detected that we can do something. Now let's get some shots out and then we're backing off again before the Vermonts can do Vermont things to me. And seven hits, no fires. Ooh, RNG. RNG Jesus giveth and taketh away. Okay, that was a Vermont, I think. There comes the Yama. Uh, ouch. Uh, back off, back off. Uh, the, the the advantage of backing off also ha has uh, is that these things are actually hitting the belt armor rather than hitting my deck armor, which uh, in a pinch can actually take that sort of fire without being insta citadel, especially at long range, whereas the deck armor probably can't. So um, that that is another benefit of actually backing off. So now I'm once more unspotted, which means they get someone to shoot at someone else, and then we're going to repeat this whole thing. Um, this is not a hugely exciting um, uh, way of playing a game, playing the game, in my opinion. You just um, okay. Where's that Vermont going? And see if we can set him on fire, because um, I don't think I've got any of the Yamas in range. Oh no, there's a Yama. Actually, I could have shot at him. Anyway, uh, and at this point, I'm deciding that I need to get out of here. So um, I'm taking some Yama shots, but I am in a full turn because once again, extremely good uh, rudder shift. So uh, I think he's underestimated my speed. And uh, once we get the turrets moving around, that Vermont actually either has the Damacon on cooldown, 
But he's got two Parma Fires going, or three Parma Fires going, so I don't want to shoot at him, I want to shoot at the Yama. I uh, can't remember if this is the one who doesn't know that you don't damage con single fires, but um, he's missed because I'm slowing down once again. Play this like a kiting cruiser. I a single hit, that's disappointing, but I am out of precise aims and I'm shooting at extreme range here, so um, without being necessarily able to see that thing while it was behind the island. Okay, not sure. He should be at speed now. Uh, we're still gonna full on reverse. Has he wised up to my shenanigans here? Yeah, that looks more, that looks like a better shot. And that's a single fire. He damage cons to single fire, as we already have established that this is a pattern. And now he probably realizes that um, he didn't want to have done that. Oh, by the way, just just have a look at the eastern side of the map. That Somers there is having a field day with these guys. Because as is customary uh, on the Asian server, nobody cares about the destroyers. Okay, I would have really liked to get the triple permafire here. But... Um, uh, so so much got torpedoes coming in, so he's probably going to take them take him out anyway. But uh, in case he he survives, let's get a couple of shots out. And it looks like he's going to run into all those torps. Uh, yeah, okay, he's perma flooding, and we're still not getting any fires. All right then, uh, we've got a Vermont chasing us at this point, but they're down to three ships, so <laughs> there's there's really not much more we we need to do here. Uh, the Yama should be dead soonishly. I don't want to steal the Somers uh, flooding damage here, so. Uh, let's just get some shots out at that Vermont and see if we can get him on fire. Yep, triple fire. Is he Dama does he have a Damacon? Maybe he does and just doesn't use it. Okay, uh, so that'll burn down nicely. And there's still some Yama shots coming in from, from... Or was it the other Vermont? I think it was the Yama. And of course he shoots my guns off again. Uh, I'm not really going to bother repairing this anymore at this stage. There's, this is the Vermont salvo now coming in. And I got rather lucky here at long range that he didn't delete me. But I think that's about how much, uh, as much as we've done. And um, uh, I think I actually did uh, did use the uh, the repair. <laughs> that was qu that was quite silly of me. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, that's that's what you do in a typical static tier ten battle. You play a he spammy cruiser sort of role. Uh, you stay at uh, at range. You have to use the island. Uh, if there are any islands, you have to use the islands. And you're doing about 75,000 points of damage, which isn't bad. Uh, it's it's not it's not a bad outcome, right? We've actually taken more damage than, we, <laughs> than we've, than we've uh, disp uh, dispensed. But uh, what if the battle is uh, uncharacteristically a little bit more fluent? Which brings us to Cage in the epicenter mode. Uh, we have Kurfürst, Yamato, Monty, uh, two cruisers. There's a bot in each team, so we'll ignore these. Um, and a Friesland on the enemy team. So epicenter is another is actually a much more f fun way of playing these things because you just can't sit back and do the snipey bits because somebody has to go and capture and uh, we effectively when we have two destroyers the enemy team has one destroyer technically and uh, if the destroyers are coming reasonably close you can do some severe damage against them obviously enemy destroyer is going to try and go for the center cup but the Friesland doesn't have any torpedoes so he's going to have a hard time there if our destroyers are just leaving him be. Anyway, we're going to head next to that island there because once again, remember, you are in a battle cruiser. Your armor is made of paper. You want to uh, you want to be next to an island because islands are solid and um, impenetrable by large caliber naval shots. So that's where exactly where we want to be. And then we want to see what we're going to do. Now, if I'm getting mid-range shots against uh, like something like a Rune or a Venezia, it is worth uh, p taking out the uh, the armor piercing because you can sit it out cruisers uh, at, at extreme range. I sometimes don't bother, but um, uh, against battleships and destroyers, you want to have the HE loaded anyway. And the HE is very, very good. Okay, there's the rune. I've got the HE loaded, so I might as well use it, even though it is not going to do a massive amount of damage if I'm hitting him. There's the bot gearing. Don't care about that thing. Uh, there's an enemy Yamato, so uh, we do want to... And there's the Venezia. Okay, it would have made sense already now to load the armor piercing if I had known that the Venezia was there, but I am getting ready to shoot at the Friesland, who very wisely, <laughs> realizing that, smokes up. And I am starting to be hammered by pretty much everybody. Uh, just some blind shots out at the Friesland. You should be about there by now. Uh, yep. <laughs> and then we're backing behind the island, because uh, people seems to ha seem to have an... An uncanny propensity to start shooting at me when they see me. So uh, let's get all these Montana, Kurfürst, and, and what was that, Yamato shots into the island instead of my poor ship. 
And now we're just going to park here for a second until we're undetected. There we go. And then uh, we're going to make make another move. So um, how does it look like? Um, unfortunately, one of our destroyers doesn't want to be in the capture circle. And there's a Venezia, which is obviously a huge problem uh, for anybody to do something about the Friesland. I, can't, I don't think I can have angles at the Friesland from over here. I mean, everybody's trying, but... Um, but this is more of a cruiser problem. If I don't have a clear shot, I better sh better off be shooting at something else. So what we got? We've got Montana. Let's try to set Montana on fire. Let's see what he does. And um, at the same time, breaking so that we can try and dodge some of these cool first shots. Yep. Okay, that's the double fire on the Montana. He's probably going to damage on that. And then we. Oh, there's. Oh, it's, well, it's a target-rich environment. We've got lots of things to shoot at. Um, but I've, I've just gotten the ta the Monty to damage on so. Come on, Monty. <laughs> Let's see if we can get permafire going on you. Um, obviously not going anywhere bow in. Uh, not, not, not going anywhere broadside, but in this case more or less stern in. <laughs> reversing back into the circle. Also, I wanted to help getting the outer ring if we could. And uh, once again, I am very much focused by people. Which makes sense, because uh, I am probably the most forward ship and uh, lightly armored and running reasonably low on health. So... It is probably time to just. I just want to get the. I just want to get a bunch of fires on the Montana if I can. I mean, Montana is not the perfect target here, but uh, the other two are, are. The other two are. Uh, are either hidden or out of my range. So, um, at this point, I think I'm about ready to give up and move around a little bit, and see that we can get, find ourselves something else to shoot at. Because yeah, we are shooting his guns off, so that would have been a Damacon probably. But now the Montana is out of my range, and uh, I do have the cruisers to look at here. And our destroyers have managed to dispatch, or well, our cruisers have managed to dispatch the uh, the Friesland in the center. So yes, everybody's still shooting at me, but um, uh, I am I am in the outer ring where I don't need to be, because we are not holding the outer ring, and there's no chance that we are ever going to hold the outer ring. Let's see if we can do something about the and the bot's still alive. <laughs> don't even know how that happened. See if we can do something about that Venezia over there. Okay, that should be the death of the Venezia. And now we're trying to set some fires on the Yamato while getting ourselves into the middle ring, which we might be able to capture. Okay, uh, that's a double fire on the Yamato. He's damaconing that. So now the counter is running 10 seconds from now, which means uh, this salvo, when it, when it reaches, should already be able to set fires. I think he's backing up at this point because he's also being torpedoed. Um... There's one torpedo coming in that's probably from the Venezia. But uh, let's see if we can do something about that Yamato. And uh, how's it on points? We are well ahead on points because we've uh, we've held the center cap and we've killed a lot of things. So uh, no, this is more of a cleanup operation at this point. But we haven't done a huge amount of damage, but we have drawn um, we have drawn a very reasonable amount of fire from the big guns such that our cruisers are still alive, which is very bad news for the destroyers. Now that's a double perma on the Yamato, so I'm just gonna get the just gonna get the uh, rear guns out on that and then start working over the core first. Okay, triple perma fire on the Yamato. Now it's time to see what we can do about the core first. Now the, the AG isn't gonna do a huge amount of damage. Oh Yamato, I see your fires have burned out. Uh, let me rectify that for you, there you go. Uh, the Cool first is behind an island, so I'm putting my nose a little bit in just in case the Yamato gets any funny ideas. Because once again, I am probably the one that everybody likes to shoot at. Uh, the cool first is poking around the the, uh, the area there. Okay, bunch more shots. Okay, you get one more salvo, and then I'm gonna start shooting at the cool first. All right, because uh, he's gonna run into all those daring torps. There's a fire. You're welcome. And now we're switching over to the armor piercing because. Well, it's a cool first, and um, we don't want to do damage over time right now. We want to uh, we want to do as inflict as much damage as we can. Let's see what we can do against the cool first deck armor at point blank with 457 millimeter main guns. Well, they are British, so there's nothing much is going to happen, but um, they are probably going to do more damage than the uh, than the um, than the high explosive. I mean, you could have set it on fire, but um, you know, I, I was curious, <laughs> so. Uh, this is generally not something I would recommend trying uh, to brawl a cool first because, um, well, it's a cool first <laughs> and you're not gonna live to tell the tale. But he was shooting at the other battleship, so um, I had the time to just get him sunk, and that was the end of that particular story. So, the Thunderer. Um, I haven't played the Conqueror, 
so I can't really say much about it. The you have to be, given that you only have eight guns, you have to be a little bit smart about the fires that you set, but you will set fires and you're, um, we'll have a look at the damage numbers in a sec here. But uh, yeah, we've done 26,000 points of damage with the fires alone. And this is really where, where the ship shines, obviously. It is the very good HE penetration combined with the chance of setting fires. Now do keep in mind that you are very lightly armored and make good use of hard uh, concealment like islands and abuse the maneuverability of the ship and if you find that you can that you're coming under concentrated fire back off because you can't tank it but your concealment is excellent and uh, you can basically vanish between shots get people to uh, fire the salvo at something else and then uh, pop out again and try to set a couple of fire on targets of opportunity is this a ship that i would personally want to have is this an extremely strong tier 10 um Probably not. I think the uh, this and the numbers, the Conqueror is reasonably similar because once again the fo the gun caliber is large, but it's not about that. It's more about the uh, fires that you're setting, and you get more guns and a faster reload on the Conqueror with the rapid reload and everything. Uh, so first first impression would be yeah, it's an interesting ship, but uh, it's not like a super powerful ship that um, that lets you get. Uh, 100k plus damage easily every single battle because you just don't have the uh, you have to, you do have to rely on fires quite a bit and you have to play it smart but it's, it's an interesting ship nevertheless it's not quite as powerful as it is in pc where i think it is known as one of the most overpowered ships uh, sitting border hum, hugging and uh, long range he spamming uh, it's not quite something you can do here so that's the thundra she is available in the shipyard for a metric um <laughs> A metric Aston of, uh, of resources, which you really should think about if you want to spend that much on a tier 10 premium. But if you like British battleships or if you like battle cruisers and you like this kind of playstyle and you want to get your hands on these really, really big guns, and you maybe have a legendary captain around who's got a much improved HE penetration skill, maybe, um, by all means. But uh, yeah, that's the ship. And that's it for today. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.